One group in the metro is especially excited to head to campus next month. It's an opportunity they didn't think they would get, and it took the work of many hands to give it to him. WHO 13's Andy Fails has the story. It's new tonight at 10. On our first visit to the Johnson House in March, we met exchange student Lisa, who was happy in her adopted home. I was like, it's great. This house is great. My school is great. She liked the culture, the food, or most of it. I don't like tomato soup. Tomato soup was the one exception, but looming nearby was a real issue. Lisa was one of eight students in the metro from Ukraine. Their visas were running out, and their home country was no place to return to. These kids need our help. They're 16, 17, and 18 years old. And they're stuck. 18 weeks later, here we are. The weather is warm and the news is good. So first and foremost, we have fully approved temporary protective status, which is the status we wanted to put these kids on. The Drake Law School pitched in with that part, but then came a call from Representative Sue Cahill from Marshalltown. She'd heard Lisa's story. And she's like, you know, I'm going to see what I can do to help, too. She's like, I can't help anything with visas, that kind of stuff, but I can reach out to the universities. Answering the call at UNI was Oksana Gribovich Haferman, native of Ukraine. What luck. Her family still lives in western Ukraine, and she heard about what was going on. She's like, we need to help these kids. After a visit to UNI, Oksana did just that. She called the Johnsons to offer Lisa and the others a scholarship. I was in my office and I walked into the living room. And my husband was there and I just started bawling. I was like, it's finally happening. Somebody's going to take care of these kids. Did you cry? Um, no. <laughs> I, no, I don't cry a lot, but I was happy. The scholarships will take care of tuition, but the students will need to cover room and board. The Johnsons to the rescue again. And they're going to be doing work study and that kind of stuff to help lower that bill, but we're still going to need to bridge that gap. And my husband and I decided to start a nonprofit. The Humanitarian Scholarship Fund of Iowa will hold its first fundraiser this weekend, and money is already coming in. Such a relief. And they know that they're safe here. And I think that's it's definitely a huge weight off their shoulders. Lisa heads to Cedar Falls next month, where she'll welcome the full American college experience, minus the tomato soup. They have sushi and ice cream and cake. Why would I want to eat tomato soup? Fair enough. In Waukee, Andy Fails, WHO 13 News. The Humanitarian Scholarship Fund of Iowa is at Waterworks Park this Sunday from 11 to 3. You'll find them at the Waterworks Amphitheater.